Here's another great video brought to you by Brayton Energy Canada. For more information, please visit www.energyconsultingadvice.com. Thanks for watching and enjoy the video. Let's start with nuclear. I've talked a lot on what I don't consider to be the drawbacks of nuclear power, so what do I consider the drawbacks to be as compared to wind? As a general rule, the bigger a nuclear power reactor is, the more efficient it is. And the more efficient any generator is, the cheaper is the electricity produced. Nuclear reactors scale up very well, but because of efficiency and overhead issues, they don't as easily scale down. Newer modular reactor designs have helped with this problem somewhat, but nuclear will never be economical for very small-scale generation, which makes it more suited for areas with large population centers nearby. The International Energy Agency estimates that nuclear power's levelized generation costs are between 3 cents and 4.8 cents per kilowatt hour in the United States, as compared to 2.8 to 3.8 cents per kilowatt hour for coal and 3 to 5 cents for wind. However, the construction costs for nuclear are about $1,900 per kilowatt of capacity, as compared to around 1250 for coal and just 1000 for wind. In fact, between 50 and 75 percent of the generation costs of a nuclear plant are simply paying back the initial investment. The cost schedule for nuclear power is very front-loaded. Most of the costs are incurred in construction, which must occur even before a single watt-hour is produced. This makes nuclear plants a riskier economic investment than, say, a coal or natural gas plant. But once the plant is actually finished and producing electricity, nuclear has much less risk than its fossil fuel counterparts, because it's much less sensitive to rising costs of fuel and the threat of carbon taxes. Operations and maintenance are also higher for nuclear than wind, at an annual $63 per kilowatt of capacity, as compared to $27 per kilowatt for wind and the fuel costs for nuclear are 0.46 cents per kilowatt hour as opposed to no fuel costs for wind. Now let's move on to wind. If wind power is that much cheaper than nuclear in construction costs, operating costs, and fuel costs, why isn't it a no-brainer to go with wind instead of nuclear? Wind is by its nature an intermittent generator. The turbines will only generate power when the wind is blowing and the blades are spinning. In the United States, which has some of the best wind potential out of all countries surveyed by the IEA, wind turbines' capacity factor only averaged around 33%. What does that mean? Well, if you had a generator that was rated at 300 watts, and you ran it for one hour, in an ideal world you would produce 300 watt-hours of energy. This would be at a 100% capacity factor, meaning the actual energy generated was 100% of the maximum capacity of generation. On average, though, a wind turbine rated at 300 watts only generates 100 watt-hours of energy per hour. That depends on location. Some areas have much greater wind potential, some have much less, but the national average is around 33%. This is much lower than nuclear's capacity factor, which averages over 90% in the United States. This means that in order to get the same amount of energy in the same amount of time, you'd need to install two to three times as much wind capacity as you would nuclear which largely cancels out the cost advantages that wind has over nuclear. The intermittent nature of wind also leads to another issue. We can't control when the wind is blowing, and we largely can't control when electricity demand will rise and fall, though we can predict both to some accuracy. This leads to problems when the electricity generated by the wind can't be immediately used, that extra electricity is just discarded and wasted, or when there is more demand at a given time that can be met by current wind speeds. There's simply no way to pick up the slack. The most obvious solution to this would be to store excess generated energy and keep it stored until the times of higher demand. Unfortunately, we don't have any cost-effective way to store large amounts of energy yet. I'll explain the advantages and drawbacks of different types of energy storage in a later video, but it's enough to say that large-scale energy storage is too expensive and too inefficient to be an option for now. Wind power doesn't require energy storage by its nature. It's all a matter of scale. To some amount of penetration, depending on who you listen to, the values are somewhere around 15 to 40 percent, but generally thought to be around 20 percent, there is very little cost integrating wind with the existing grid. That is, even without any form of energy storage, up to 20 percent of our electricity can be provided by wind without sacrificing reliability or cost effectiveness. 
The simple explanation for this is that for every kilowatt hour produced by a wind turbine, there is one less kilowatt hour of demand being placed on other generating plants, like nuclear, coal, or natural gas. This doesn't help us, though, at very high levels of penetration. Beyond that magic threshold of around 20%, it starts to get more and more expensive to integrate wind into the grid without energy storage. As the amount of integration increases, you need more and more extra capacity, and you end up wasting more and more energy during lulls of demand. At the extreme, with 100% of our power being supplied by wind, we would need tremendous amounts of capacity far and above our estimated demand just to have reasonable average reliability. This would also have intractable and incalculable cost.